Hi everyone, in this video we will see how VXLAN routing works. So when we say routing, it means that the server 1 and server 2, they belong to different subnets, which means that uh, we need some kind of routing in the leaf switches. Okay. Now again, uh, we are using our simple uh, topology and we are using Arista switches, but these concepts are standard. So if you understand these concepts on Arista switches, then they apply equally on Cisco or any other um, vendor. Okay, now before we jump on to the VXLAN routing, let's first see as a refresher how inter-VLAN routing works and we, we will see uh, what is asymmetric routing, symmetric routing. We will do the packet walk for each of these uh, scenarios and then we will do the same with VXLAN routing. Okay. Now let's see how inter-VLAN routing works. When we say inter-VLAN, it means that we want to send the traffic from one VLAN to an other VLAN. Okay. Now in inter-VLAN routing, there are two ways to do it. One is asymmetric and other is symmetric. So now it's the case of asymmetric routing. Okay. Here we will define a default route in server 1 and server 2. Okay. And here in server 1, uh, we use the VLAN 10 between the C leaf 1 and server 1. And here between server 2 and the B leaf 1, we use the VLAN 20. Okay. So now suppose. Uh, and we will configure the SVI switched virtual interface for VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 in both of the switches. Okay. Now, why is it called asymmetric? Now, suppose we send a packet from server 1 to server 2. Okay. The packet comes to C leaf 1. Okay in the VLAN 10, okay, then the packet will be routed to the SVI uh, 20 in, C in CLF 1. And then from here, it will be switched in the VLAN 20 to the belief 1 and it will reach here. And from there, the packet will be switched to server 2. Now here in this case, when the packet is going from server 1 to server 2, the routing happened only in the C leaf 1, not in the B leaf 1. Okay. Now, suppose we have a packet we send from server 2. Okay. Now, here in this case, when the packet comes here in the SVI 20, in the VLAN 20, it will be routed locally in the VLAN 10 and then from here it will be switched in the VLAN 10 to C leaf 1 and from there it, it will be switched to server 1. So here in this case again the routing happened only on the first hop not here. So it's called asymmetric routing. Okay. For each flow the routing only occurs at the first hop. Okay, so now let's look at, now it's a more detailed view of the asymmetric routing. You, you can see here that uh, if a packet is, uh, is uh, coming from server 1, okay, it will come in the VLAN 10, okay, and then it will be uh, forwarded to the SVI and then it will be routed to the VLAN 20 and then here it will be switched. 
okay and then it will finally reach the server too uh, what is an svi svi is simply a virtual port that connects a vlan to the routing process okay and now uh, similarly uh, for a flow from server 2 to server 1 okay the packet will come to the belief 1 in the vlan 20 okay and then it will be routed into the vlan 10 and from here it will be switched okay and finally it will reach the server 1 okay so now uh, let's jump onto the CLI and let's configure this case of asymmetric inter VLAN routing. So here you can see that in in both of the leaf switches, okay, we, we will uh, configure the VLANs and we, we will uh, configure their SVIs, okay and then the physical ports will pass the vlan toward the spines okay both the vlans and these are the ports toward the servers and in spine the the spine is just there to switch the traffic okay and then on the servers we will configure the vlans the svi and we will pass the vlan and we will configure the default route okay so let's start our configuration so first see leaf one belief one spine one server one and here we have server two okay now let's look at uh, the arp table show ip arp as soon as you put the default route okay it will send an arp request for this ip address okay i have explained the arp process in two of the videos okay and i will put the link in the description in case you are not sure how arp works you can just watch those videos now uh, let's ping from server 1 to server 2 ping 172.16.20.1 so the ping worked okay and now if we look at the mac table okay we have the mac entries and show ip uh, show ip arp and we can see the arp uh, entries okay now let's do a packet walk and see how the ping worked. Okay, as soon as we hit the ping command on the server one, okay, it will perform a subnet mask check on the destination IP address okay and it finds out that the destination IP address is in a different subnet so it will look at the routing table so let's come to the server one so show IP route okay so it will look at the routing table and 172.16.10.254 is the next hop okay so uh, it has the arp entry for that okay so it will build the ping packet okay the vlan this is the ethernet header 
okay the vlan tag and you, you can see the source mac is its irb show interface vlan 10 this one okay and the destination mac is the irb of the c leaf one show interface vlan 10 you can see this one so it will build the packet and it will send this packet to the c leaf one okay when the c leaf one receives this packet how would this switch know that it needs to perform switching or routing okay when it looks at the destination mac address okay it finds out that the destination mac address in the vlan 10 belongs to its its svi okay so it has to check the payload okay and when it checks the payload it finds out that the destination ip is 172.16.20.1 okay it checks this ip address in the routing table 20.1 and it matches this entry so it means that it has to send the packet in the vlan 20 okay so what it has to do is it has to remove the ethernet header why because whenever a switch has to route the packet it has to re rewrite the ethernet header okay so it will send the packet in the vlan uh, 20 okay now i ask you how did it know about this destination mac address because of the r process guys r process is really important for the ethernet header so it will send an r request in the vlan 20 okay and the, when the r request reaches server 2 it will respond with the r reply okay so now it it has built this packet and it will be, uh, send this packet to spine one now spine one will just look at the destination mac and it will have an entry now how it has the entry because of that same r process between the c leaf one and the server two the switches in between they recorded the source mac addresses from the arp uh, request and reply packets and they built their mac table okay so because of those entries spine one will just look at sorry here uh, because this packet was received by spine one so spine one will just look at the destination mac and it will switch this packet the same packet to the b leaf one now when the b leaf one receives the packet it will also look at the destination mac address here and it will forward the packet switch the packet to server 2 okay now when server 2 receives the ping request it has to send a ping reply so it will send the ping reply to who to its default gateway which is the belief one and when this packet reaches belief one belief one has to route the packet and it has to rewrite the uh, ethernet header okay and when it sends out this packet when the spine one receives this packet it will simply uh, switch the packet to c leaf one and when the c leaf one receives the packet it will switch the packet to server one okay so that's how the asymmetric intervlan routing works now let's have a look how symmetric inter vlan routing works okay now here you can see we have introduced a new svi okay this svi 30 now instead of configuring the vlan 10 and vlan 20 on both the switches okay we will configure vlan 20 and svi 20 only on the b leaf 1 and vlan 10 and svi 10 only on the c leaf 1 okay and this new vlan and svi we will uh, configure on both of the switches and now we have to put a, st a static route okay 
on the C leaf one and the B leaf one to reach those subnets. Okay, now here if you see, if a packet is coming from server one, okay, it will come in the the VLAN ten, and from there it will be routed to the VLAN thirty. Then it will be switched in the VLAN thirty to the B leaf one, and from there it will be routed again to the SVI. 20 so you can see here now in both the cases whether the traffic comes from server 1 or server 2 okay the routing will be performed on both of the leaf switches so this is the reason it is called symmetric routing okay if you come from here from server 2 it will come in the uh, VLAN 20 it it will route the traffic in the VLAN 30 and from there it will switch the traffic in the VLAN 30 and then from here to it will route the traffic to the VLAN 10 and finally server 1 okay which is symmetric so now this is the more detailed view okay the same um, the same process I have just explained Okay, now let's jump onto the CLI and see um, how to configure the symmetric inter VLAN routing. Let me first roll back all of the config. So, show VLAN ID 10, you can see the configuration is rolled back. So, now here you can see we, we will define a new SVI, the VLAN and SVI 30. Okay, and we, we will uh, pass the VLAN towards the spine and the servers and we will put a static route. Okay, to reach those subnets. And in the spines, we, we, we will simply pass the VLAN 30 the new uh, VLAN we introduced and then uh, the configuration on server 1 and 2 remains the same okay copy the C leaf 1 the B leaf 1 spine 1 server 1 server 2 now, if we look at the ARP entries, you can see we have these ARP entries. They are the result of the, st the static routes we put into the switches. Okay. Now, let's ping from server 1 to server 2 and see if the ping works. .20 so, the ping worked. Now, let's have a packet walk and see how the ping worked so here now when we hit the ping command on the on server one okay it will perform a subnet mask check okay and it will send the packet to its default gateway which is cd1 in the VLAN in the vlan 10 so when the packet reaches cd1 okay because the destination mac address in this packet is the svi mac of the clf1 in vlan 10 so it knows that it has to check the payload so when it checks the payload it finds out that it has to perform a routing so clf1 so show ip route 172.16.20.1 and it matches this next stop so it has an ARP entry in the uh, ARP table, show IP ARP. So it will simply rewrite the Ethernet header. Okay. And in the VLAN 30, and it will send the packet to spine one. The spine one will simply switch the packet. Okay. Um, and when this packet reaches the belief one now here when the belief one receives the packet this packet it finds out that it received the packet in the vlan 30 
okay and the de destination mac is 8b31 so the leaf one show interface show interface vlan 30 so it means that it has to check the payload so when it checks the payload of this it knows that now it has to route the packet to 16.20.1 so it will uh, rewrite the ethernet header okay it knows the mac address of the server 2 and it will send this packet to server 2 so when the server 2 receives the packet it will send a reply okay and in the vlan 20 and the belief one will simply route the packet okay in the vlan 30 the spine will simply switch the packet and when it is received by the c leaf one c leaf one will route the packet from the vlan 30 to the vlan 10 and the packet the ping reply packet is received by server one okay so that's how inter vlan asymmetric and symmetric routing works now you might be thinking when to use asymmetric routing and when to use symmetric routing look there is no right or wrong it all depends upon your network architecture your network requirement you just need to know the difference between the two approaches and the major difference between the two approaches is that uh, look here now in the case of asymmetric routing okay suppose you have uh, hundreds of hosts here in the vlan 10 and you have hundreds of hosts here in the vlan 20 so any broadcast here so, uh, take silly fun any broadcast in the vlan 10 will reach here in the belief one similarly any broadcast in the vlan 20 will reach here in the c leaf one and you don't need that because you don't have any host uh, connected in the vlan 20 in c leaf one okay and similarly similarly we have no host in the vlan 10 uh, connected to the belief one so we don't need to explore our mac tables with those vlans okay but uh, so suppose in future you might have a host here in uh, vlan 10 suppose here then in that case you will have to extend the vlan so these two can coexist okay you can also use um, asymmetric and symmetric uh, simultaneously okay so for the vlans where you have to extend it uh, y y you can use asymmetric routing and for the vlans where you don't have to extend you can use symmetric okay so that's the end of inter vlan routing which is the part one now in part two i will show how vxlan asymmetric and symmetric routing works until the next time, goodbye.